Good morning, everyone. My name is Rich Miller, and I would like to welcome you to this Sunday's service with Unity of the Valley, July 19, 2020. For our opening song, we're going to be doing I Am the Radiant Life of God. And many of you already know it, and so here's how it goes. Here we go. I am the radiant life of God. I am, I am, I am. I am the radiant life of God. I am, I am, I am. The health of God, the strength of God, vitality, energy, vim of God. I am the radiant life of God. I am, I am, I am. All right. Second verse. I am the wonderful love of God. I am, I am, I am. I am the wonderful love of God. I am, I am, I am. The peace of God, the joy of God, serenity, harmony, rhythm of God. I am the wonderful love of God. I am, I am, I am. All right, first verse. I am the radiant life of God. I am, I am, I am. I am the radiant life of God. I am, I am, I am. The health of God, the strength of God, vitality, energy, vim of God. I am the radiant life of God. I am, I am, I am. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you, Rich Miller. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Thank you for joining Unity of the Valley Spiritual Center's Sunday Zoom online service. My name is John Ruddy, and I'll be serving as your host today. We're delighted that you've decided to spend the next hour with us on this beautiful Sunday morning. We know that you have many other things competing for your time and attention. I mean, you could be down in Northfield celebrating Scott Carlson's birthday week. You know, you could have something else to do today, but even Scott's here this morning, so we're honored that you chose to be present now with us, your spiritual community. We're going to welcome back our special musical guest and longtime friend, Rich Miller, this morning. Thanks for joining us again this morning, Rich. Looking forward to your contributions to the service. We greatly appreciate our speakers and musicians who are willing to join us on Zoom. If you'd like to be added to our electronic newsletter called The Weekly Buzz to stay updated, simply email us at info at unityofthevalleymn.org. Likewise, if you have a prayer request for our prayer chaplains, you may submit it at the same email address. We'd also like to encourage you to subscribe to our Unity of the Valley YouTube channel, to like our Unity of the Valley Facebook page, and to visit our website at unityofthevalleymn.org to learn more about us. There are listed all the ways you can reach us. We're blessed to have several volunteers who make this service happen digitally each Sunday. Let me introduce you to those who are sharing their talents this morning. Jennifer Stevens is serving as our daily word reader this morning. Sherry Johnson will be delivering the prayer box blessing and leading our affirmations. Uh, so we'll change that on the slide. <laughs> Special thanks to Deanna Reese, who's in charge of the slides. She does a wonderful job producing these slides every week. And a special thanks to Mark Solwold, who serves behind the scenes. He handles all the technology. He puts the slides up. He's our expert in PowerPoint. So if you like what's going on, make sure you let Mark know. If you don't, we appreci every appreciate everyone's unique contribution to our service. So here's a few reminders. Unless you have a role in today's service, please keep your microphone on mute until the end. Likewise, if you're going to be multitasking while you watch the service, please turn off your video so as not to distract other viewers. Those controls are in the lower left-hand corner of your Zoom screen. And then finally, 
Please refrain from using the chat feature during the service as it distracts from the music and the message. So we invite you to kick back, get comfortable, relax, tune out any distractions. Let in love and light this morning. After the service, you're welcome to stay on to say hello to other Unity members and guests during our online social time, and your microphones at that point will be unmuted. So now I'd like to introduce our speaker so as not to interrupt the flow of our meditation time. Our speaker today is Drake Powell. Drake is a meditation teacher, life coach, stress reduction consultant, yoga instructor, and speaker. By using a blend of ancient and modern tools and simple practices, he teaches his clients to ground themselves in their deeper power and subtler awareness, allowing clarity, resilience, and kindness to flower. In this way, clients access inner resources that ground and center them, even as the world changes. Drake grew up in a racially charged and physically dangerous environment. Living in this intense energy, he became interested in yoga and meditation practice as a way to navigate life's challenges. By age 11, he was devouring books on meditation and soon began his own meditation practice. He eventually took up Kripalu, Kripalu yoga and blended it with his study of meditation, applying the lessons to stress reduction and conflict resolution in a 25-year career working with aggressive adults. Drake believes we all have an instinct leading us toward fulfillment. His work was created out of a need to ground and heal himself as well as a desire to help our shared community. Drake's been affiliated with Unity since 1996, and he did speak for us back in 2016. I was there. His message today is appropriately titled, How to Navigate Our Shared Crisis. So we'll welcome back Drake. Thanks for being with us this morning. We look forward to your message. So at this time, we'd like to welcome anyone who's watching our Zoom Sunday broadcast for the first time. Please join me in this special blessing. Together, we offer you peace, love, and friendship. We bless you, and we're glad you're here. And now it's time for the reading of the Daily Word, followed by the blessing of the prayer box and the reading of our affirmations. Good morning. The Daily Word for today is togetherness. I share God's love peace, and joy. While I treasure my times of quiet and solitude, I also look forward to enjoying the company of family, friends, and members of my faith community. Whether we're working, volunteering, praying, or simply enjoying one another's company, our shared experiences allow me to support people I care about and feel supported in return. I enjoy and value togetherness, throughout every season of my human journey. During times of trial, hardship, or grief, being in the company of friends and family helps com uh, comfort me and keep me strong. Likewise, during times of celebration, being in the company of others multiplies my joy. In times of togetherness, may the love, peace, comfort and joy of God bless us all. And the verse for today, all who believed were together and had all things in common. Acts 2.44. Again, the word for today is togetherness. Good morning. Uh, this prayer box holds an infinite number of virtual prayers. So I invite you to silently add your own name or the names of anyone in your heart or on your mind who may need prayer support. These virtual prayers are known and will be addressed by the infinite. You know that truth behind all appearances of disharmony is the divine and perfect presence of the infinite, which we call God. 
We call forth within all people the wisdom and strength, the love and peace, the wholeness and vitality of their perfect presence. We affirm that the requests in our prayer box and in our hearts and in our minds are being received in divine timing for the highest good of all concerned. We send love and light not only to those people and circumstances, but to the community, our country, and our world. May the love of God enfold us. May the peace of God uphold us. May the wisdom of God inspire us and help us to know in our hearts that all is well. And so it is. You will join me for the affirmation for the day. I center myself in the eye of the storm and tap into my inner wisdom for guidance. I am clear and calm. And then the affirmation for our center together. We give thanks that unity of the valley is a prosperous, thriving, inspired, connected community. We are growing spiritually and manifesting our dreams and goals in an energy of love, peace, and joy. And so it is. Amen. Mm -hmm. And now, as we prepare for meditation, wisdom guides my way. My path appears as bright as day. God leads me on and gives me strength. Assured I will arrive at length. It's love divine that prospers me health and all good abundantly with substance rich my life is blessed in divine care I find sweet rest As one in conscious unity, rich blessings now are given to me. The heavenly windows open wide, my utmost needs are all. Well, hello. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today, and thank you for allowing me to be a part of your community. I'm going to ask you just briefly to listen carefully to the bell. Here we go. And so we want to understand that one of the most important elements that we can do each and every day of our life is activate a process of self-soothing. Now, soothing, self-calming comes in different ways to different people, but let's do a really simple uh, meditation that we may blend into other meditations right now that we can activate. So one of the things that we want to understand is that we have the opportunity, we have the opportunity to truly be present. 
because we have we are embodied we are embodied and so let's activate our bodies in in terms of activating our relationship to being present now the chest is going to be up i would suggest to you that learning how to calm learning how to be in that calm center is one of the most important elements that we can do to balance the inner and the outer world so the chest is up you can either have your eyes open or closed and just be aware of your body for just a moment and understand the importance of the jaws breathing slowly and easily i'm going to ask you just to relax your jaw now, the, the jaws don't lie to you. They're like a, like a child who tells you the truth. They let you know how tense you've been. Breathing nice and easily, again, give that message to your jaws, allow your jaws to relax. Feel how it changes the relationship to the face, the lips, allowing the center of your forehead to relax. Now, when we relax the jaws, it also, also helps to relax the hands. Relaxing the jaws and the hands at the very same time. When the jaws relax, it helps the heart to open. And if we really want to move through this world in a graceful way, we have to move the graceful heart. Breathing slowly and easily, allowing the heart to open and to shine into the world. And just begin to pay attention. Pay attention to your senses. Again, breathing slowly, easily. And just notice if you can any scent. Be aware of any, even the most subtle of smell. Maybe you can smell coffee. What can you smell? Continuing to breathe, noticing it, and coming into the sense of taste. Noticing your sense of taste. Is there, is there an echo or a remnant of anything you've tasted this morning? Traveling into touch, feel the touch of your tongue. Notice the smoothness of your teeth, both the bottom and the top of your tongue. Continuing to breathe and go through touch throughout your whole body, all the way through your body, notice your clothing, all the way into your hands and feet. Continuing to breathe slowly and easily, be aware of temperature. Are you comfortable? Noticing the difference between the temperature of your hands and feet. Are they the same temperature or are they different? Continuing to breathe, aware of rhythm. Noticing any rhythm in your presence. Maybe you can hear the birds singing. Be aware of the beat of your heart and pulse. And notice the rhythm of breath. Continue to breathe slowly and easily, listening carefully. Try to hear every sound. Breathing slowly and easily, listen to any sound whatsoever. Hearing the sound of my voice and the cadence of my speech. Listening carefully and being aware of sight. Notice if there are any sights whatsoever. Notice any color. Continuing to breathe nice and easily. And let's take a nice calm breath in, breathing in fully. Pause, just hold the breath, notice. And then exhale out nice and easily, squeeze the stomach and then inhale again. Pause, holding the stomach. Inhale, squeezing now, two more breaths. Inhaling, pause, pay attention. And then exhale it out. One more breath, inhale, pause. And then exhale it out. Take a nice breath in and make that deep sigh. Oh. Now let your breath come back to normal. The chest is up, relaxing the shoulders, the neck and jaws. And just breathe, notice subtlety. And in your mind, have contact with that phrase, I am. Just say it in the back of your mind, I am. And in the presence of your being, notice subtlety, any subtle detail. Breathing nice and easily, eyes opening. Breathing nice and easily, and just in the aftermath of that very, very brief meditation, notice the echo. You know, the right after a meditation is the most important time. So notice how you've shifted and grounded, and be aware that you can utilize this power to grow more profoundly over time so that you can be in peace even when things are tumultuous. So thank you for taking part of this meditation.
Thank you, Drake. I open my heart, you fill me with love. Let me feel your divine sweet glow. I choose to be still, quiet inside, so your guidance I will know. I open my heart, you fill me with love, fill me with love. so easy to say I'm quiet and still Ooh, it is so easy to give it my best and know that the rest will be in accord with God's will Ooh, it is so easy Say I open my heart Ooh, it is so easy To live in the way That brightens my day And I know a great way to start I open my heart You fill me with love let me feel your divine sweet glow. I choose to be still, quiet inside, so your guidance I will know. I open my heart, you fill me with love, fill me with love. Yes, I accept there's always room for me to grow. Now I accept it is the love of God that makes it so. So I open my heart, you fill me with love. Let me feel your divine sweet glow. I choose to be still, quiet inside, so your guidance I will know. I open my heart, you fill me with love, fill me with love. I open my heart, fill me with love, fill me with love. Thank you so much, Rich. That, that is so apropos to the conversation. So I really appreciate that offering. You know, uh, here we are, we're here, we're here to investigate how do we navigate our shared crisis? You know, that seems like a big, a big mouthful to, to chew on. So, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot going on. You know, this crisis that we're involved with, to me, this process of, of learning how to navigate it is really about understanding that this crisis is an individual crisis for each of us that we're all having together. And so as a result, what we need to do or what we might be appropriate for us to do is really involved with the intimacy of each and every one of our individual lives. You know, it's kind of like having the sun come out after a big rain. It's been raining quite a bit lately. And after the sun comes out after a big rain, every puddle reflects the sun. And so that's kind of the process for us as well. You know, to me, you know, part of this realization of what we, what we should aspire to, you know, not hope to, but develop the intent for, is to have a direct relationship with our own self, our own heart. Because I don't think anyone can tell us what to do. 
really what we, uh, uh, in order to understand where, what we need for our own authenticity, it's about coming in direct relationship with our own heart. In order for us to be aware of what we might want to express into the world, we have to be aware of what's going on in the inner world first and then shine outward. At least that's my perception of reality. And so I'm asking you to, to be aware that, that this particular challenge over the course of this last few months and even beyond this last few months, you know, all the way from the uprisings here in the Twin Cities, all the way from uh, the, the challenge of dealing with COVID, this is all a series of events that just keeps flowing. It's a perfect storm. Didn't start with COVID, it was going on before COVID. I could see it happening in the election and even before the election. And so to me, being in contact with what we can do to, to shift this is understanding in some sense what separates us from our inner world. One of the elements that I would suggest that's happened with all this, this, uh, this crisis, and, and it's not just one element, you know, it's a racial crisis, a crisis of confidence. It's a crisis of conflict. You know, we're seeing people getting into conflicts all over the place uh, in terms of having just a latent sort of hostility that they're meeting the world with. So one of my suggestions to you is, is that if you make contact with someone who has a, a greater commitment to their values than you do to yours, you will shift into their values. So if you, if you come into contact with someone who is filled with anger and, and hatred, if you are not grounded within your values, you're going to find yourself being angry. Uh, one, of the easiest, uh, one of the easiest things in the world is to hate someone who hates you. I have had a personal you know, relationship to being in that situation, and it's easy to slip into that. But my perception of reality is that that is not what we need to do in order to help shift this into a different conversation. We have to understand that this crisis speaks to each and every person individually, just as the sun shining in each of those puddles. You know, what my suggestion is to, to you is that this situation is a perfect storm. It's like a cosmic mirror. It charges each and every one of us. I would suggest that there's not a single person that you come in contact with that is not charged to some degree by the elements that have gone on. You know, maybe I'm wrong, but that's at least my perception. And so in each one of us, you know, life is the perfect comedian. Each one of us finds this charge in a way that's specifically poignant to us. You know, for me, this whole situation could not have been more directly impactful in sort of hurting my, my relationship to life. You know, for me, in my background, having grown up where I did, I grew up in the South Side of Chicago. I grew up in an Irish American community in the early 70s that was very definitely not into having black people move into the neighborhood. And as a young child, I was dealing with the heat of that experience, extreme anger, extreme and aggressive anger uh, to me as a small child. But of course, it changed as I grew older and became more violent and more scary. In, a, in, in the course of that and other elements that were going on at the time, after I left there, you know, I, I got out of that, time, that area at 17, like I was getting out of prison. I was so excited to leave. And yet what I found was that my shadow came with me everywhere that I went. I found myself becoming afraid in situations where I would just be by myself. I found myself losing contact with what I felt were my true values. And so what I would suggest to you is that one, some of the things that I learned is that it's incredibly important to deescalate. I would suggest that one of the most important elements to, to be in contact with in this time is to have a template of deescalation, have a simple template that you understand. You know, again, it's like coming up, uh, driving a motorcycle. When you come, are driving a motorcycle, part of how you keep yourself safe is you look at things in the distance and you avoid things as you go. One of, the, one of the funny things to me about myself as a teacher is I use analogies about things I would never do. I actually don't drive a motorcycle and, and I can't even imagine myself driving a motorcycle. However, that's how I assume that it goes. You know, it's important to understand where, where you're going. You know, if you have a dog that tears up the garbage five days a week, at a certain point, you have to stop acting shocked to come into the house with the garbage torn up. 
And at a certain point, it's about how you are relating to the situation. Yes, this is the cir circumstance, but are you being adaptive? Are you flowing with the situation? So developing a de-escalation template is understanding that when something happens unexpectedly, and a lot of times the unexpected is it can be predicted because it works with what the elements that you feel charged about. You know, whether it's the, the racial conflicts that we've seen or the intolerance of all kinds, whether we, it's the sort of policing that people are doing in different parts, you know, f you know att being aggressively attacking of others who don't fit what they perceive should be happening. What happens when you get in that situation? You can either add more heat to the fire and add, more, and, and add an, an accelerant, which is your own sense of, of being personally offended, you know, as it says in the, the book, The Four Agreements, you know, we have to understand that we have to be aware of when we're taking things personally. It's hard not to take things personally when someone calls your name and calls it and said, says something about you in specific or just <clears throat> or describes you specifically or addresses an issue that you've been dealing with your whole life. It's hard not to be personally offended. And yet, if we do want to have a positive effect, we have to understand that we have to step back at that point. If you're at a party and you are having an extremely uh, uh, angry discussion about the things that have gone on in the Twin Cities and politics in general, I would suggest at a certain point that if the couch bursts on fire, if someone left a cigarette and, and it dropped into the couch and suddenly the couch bursts on fire, the couch that you're sitting on, at that point, it's probably more important to put the fire out than to continue the argument. And that fire burns in our own heart. You know, again, if we come through that heat, we're just gonna spread the fire. What if a fire somehow breaks out on both couches at the same time? Do you really think that the person who is sitting on a fiery couch is going to focus on the couch that you're sitting on? No, it never happens that way. Each person is personally charged and each person feels that burning anger in their own breasts. If you're going to be an actor or an actress, if you're going to play the central role in a, in a play, it's important that you understand your role. By the way, I'm a former actor. Okay, I, I actually was in a play. Well, I, when I say an actor, that may be kind of expanding it a little bit, but I was in a play in my freshman year in college, and I was the guard in the back to the right. That was my role. I was just to stand there like this, with, a, with like a spear. It was a, it was a Greek play. Now, if I had, hadn't understood my role, if I hadn't understood the most important person in the play, most important because I could have disrupted the whole play. If I didn't understand my role and I suddenly charged out in front, the whole play wouldn't have worked. So it's important to understand that you are the most important actor in the conflict. It's important for you to put out the fire that you're connected to. You can't wait for the person to put out theirs. And you can't expect them to listen to you in terms of hearing what you have to say. In my per perception, now, again, I spent, uh, you know, tw uh, almost 20 years working in a locked uh, mental health unit dealing with the most aggressive people. I spent uh, almost 15 years working in a chronic pain clinic with people having such severe experiences of pain that some of them would stand for five minutes and sit for five minutes and stand for five minutes and repeat that pattern all day long and maybe get two hours of sleep at night. I also worked uh, with, uh, for eight years with people with, who were very aggressive with developmental issues. In two years, I worked at a level five high school running a timeout room. Maybe you're starting to sense a pattern. My pattern was, was I was working with people who were in the, in the most pain and also in the most uh, uh, relationship to striking out at someone else. As a child, I spent my time trying to, to de-escalate people. So I was doing it as I was growing up as well. And part of what I developed was what I called nonlinear de-escalation. Nonlinear de-escalation is when the person that you're de-escalating is not conscious that you're de-escalating them. It's very, very effective. An example of that is, for instance, is when someone tells a joke or a scary story. 
So the nonlinear de-escalation is when you surprise both the other person and yourself. And the best way to de-escalate someone, again, is to de-escalate yourself. And so I'm asking you to bring this template into your life. I'm asking you to have a clear idea of what you're going to do if someone comes up and suddenly is strongly and, and, and just intensely angry with you in a way that is completely unexpected at the time. Be aware that it's often going to be around a subject that you feel charged about. So in this situation that pops up, the very first thing I'm asking you to do is to slow your breathing down. Slow your breathing down. Understand that when you become angry or afraid, you tend to take more shallow, more rapid breaths. So breathe more slowly. Breathing more slowly, breathing into your stomach. Be aware of the hara, H-A-R-A, the hara. It's a, it's a spot an inch below the navel and a half an inch in. When you feel this conflict happening, bring your awareness into the hara. It acts to kind of pull the, the sediment down. You know, when we have a conflict, and by the way, we're much more likely to act explosively in conflict if we've been living with a lot of nervous energy prior to the conflict. So slowing your breathing down, bringing your awareness into the hara, this helps to pull your nervous energy down. It helps to pull the sediment down. It's almost like watching a, a sumo wrestler, you know, as they get, you know, stable and they get really into their haunches. They're grounding themselves. So we're slowing the breathing down and bringing awareness into the hara. The next thing, the element that I'm asking you to do is to be aware of how things tend to happen with tunnel vision. When you have someone pop up that doesn't expect, you don't expect, or they do something that you're like, oh my God, oh no, they didn't say that. You know, and in all that, in that moment, either you're afraid or maybe you're, uh, you, maybe you might be terrified of the person or very angry with what they're doing. Maybe they don't, they're not doing something that you feel is appropriate for safety. Maybe they don't have a mask on or whatever it might be in your perception. So in that moment, if you keep tunnel vision with them, all of a sudden you're a deer in the headlights. What do we say about a deer in the headlights? They're frozen. We do not want to be frozen in the midst of conflict. So slowing the breathing down, bring your awareness into the hara, and broaden your awareness. Notice your peripheral vision. Right now, you have a peripheral vision. I would ask you to be aware of it right now. You have peripheral vision and even other peripheral elements. There are sounds that are happening right now in the space that you're in that you're not, perhaps not paying attention to. However, if you can notice a subtle sound what that does is it raises the level of what is not important and lowers the level of what's extremely important so that what's extremely important becomes at a level that now we can operate. If you have a neighbor, as an example, who shoots baskets every day, every single day you see them shooting baskets and maybe after we're over this COVID hump, hump you see this person at the Timberwolves game. If they hit this free throw, they get a million dollars at halftime. Well, you know how often they shoot, but they shoot it and they don't even hit the basket because it's too important to them. By raising the level of what seems unimportant, you also lower the level of what seems incredibly important at a level that you can actually digest it. And so that's part of what I would just suggest that we can do to help shift the, the shared crisis. Now, the final element that I would ask you to be aware of is in so many different religions around the world. It's in uh, Hindu religion, in the philosophy of Advaita Vedanta. It's in Christian mysticism. Uh, Joel Goldsmith, who is a, a, a writer that many times you're going to find in the Unity bookstores, he talks about the importance of the eye, being aware of the mystical eye. It is also related to the phrase, I am. I am that I am. All over the world, you hear this phrase as a power phrase. And I would suggest to you that the most important things in life are the things that are so important that we forget that they're even there. How often do you think about gravity every day? About the only time I think about gravity is when I get out of the shower. All right. And then I have to relate to it in a way that makes me feel like I'm winning. You know, uh, things have changed. So I'm like, oh, it's not as bad as it could be, right? It's all relative. But, but we don't think of gravity regularly. How often do you think about blinking your eyes? 
You probably won't even think about blinking your eyes even one time today other than we, when, when we just brought it up. Okay? So we want to understand these elements. I am is one of the most important things that you can do to change the world. Because I am helps you to balance the inner and the outer world. So those four elements, learning how to activate de-escalation and understanding that you can't de-escalate if you are not willing to listen. Active listening occurs when you're not just waiting to speak. So these four elements, slowing your breathing down, be aware of the horror, widen your awareness, and activate that phrase, I am, in the back of your mind. Now, I don't think that you can just do all this just like that. You know, it's just like having a, uh, you know, a fire drill. You don't wait till the fire happens to have the drill. So what I'm suggesting is to start making contact with it. Each and every moment of your life is the most important moment of your life and the greatest opportunity if you recognize it. So what I'm saying and suggesting, please understand that we are in the midst of the greatest opportunity of our lives. So that template, and the final thing I want to suggest to you that if you want to really shift the world is understand that you have to be in contact with your code. Every human being has to have a code. Your code is related to what you value. My values are kindness. The root of the word kindness is kin. Compassion. So kindness is to treat everyone like family with love. Compassion, which we can relate to empathy, but it's beyond empathy because an empath often feels the emotions that the people are feeling with them, but they feel them so intensely that maybe it seems too uncomfortable for the person to be with other people. Compassion is like the song, Let It Be. I find myself in times of trouble. Mother Mary comes to me singing songs of wisdom, Let It Be. Mother Mary represents this compassionate nature. And so it's not just trapped in the situation. Joy. Joy is a feeling of being on purpose and on mission and understanding that what you are here for is service. You are here to help humanity to heal. And the way you carry yourself through the day makes a huge difference. So being on point. And the final one, which I'm asking your assistance with, because I got shook up in this, in this whole thing. I got shook up because... I was, you know, again, life is the perfect comedian. My home is in the middle of this whole area that was uh, affected dramatically. And not that we all haven't been, but it was happening right here. I mean, at night, uh, and, and by the way, I still haven't gotten back uh, to normal in that way when I hear sirens, you know. Oftentimes I was feeling like I was in two places at the same time both here and in my past. And so what I lost contact with to some degree, which is one of the most important of my values, is the value of positive indifference. Positive indifference is the relationship to unconditional love. Positive indifference knows that no matter what happens, we got this. Positive indifference is, uh, is very important to be aware of because it's part of our educational process. If you don't have positive indifference, you're going to have a charge that life is going to move you towards until you learn how to shift it. So those are the elements to me. Be aware of what you value and make contact with that value every single day. And here's the last thing that I'm going to tell you about that I would never do. If you're going to swim across a lake, which you will never ever see me swimming across a lake, not even once. I, I can't imagine. And the only way that I'm swimming across the lake is if I'm living in Pompeii and the volcano is going, okay? But if you are going to swim across a lake, I would think that you need to be checking your, your progress. Every few strokes, you need to check that you're on point. This is your, your value. Your values are what you're moving towards. They're not a destination, they are a direction. And this is the means that I'm suggesting that we can support each other in our crisis. So I'm gonna stick around a little bit after if you have any questions because we can do so much together if we recognize our power. So thank you. I mean, I can go all day by the way, but I'm assuming that I'm supposed to stop. <laughs>
Thank you, Drake. Thank God, thank God, each moment of the day, I fill my heart with love and say, thank God, thank I want to thank God for giving me the strength to carry on. I want to thank God for showing me the difference between right and wrong. And if you want to get down to it, I never ever find a better way to do it without the help of God. Thank God. Thank God for giving me the message in this song. I want to thank God for showing me help has been here all along. And if you want to let it through, this is all you need to do. Just open up your heart and give thanks to God. Look out. Then look in and remember to look with love. Keep your heart open for a gift to you directly from the heavens above. Still the mind and emotions too. Just let spirit soar. Do all this. I promise you, you'll get all you're ready for. Opportunity is always at the door. Thank God. heart open for a gift to you directly from the heavens above still the mind and emotions too just let the spirit soar do all this i promise you you'll get all you're ready for opportunities always at the door thank god i want to thank god Words cannot express my gratitude. I want to thank God for showing me the way to lose the blues. And now I know exactly what to do to gain a higher point of view. I just open up my heart. I give thanks to God. I give thanks to God. Well, I just want to give my thanks to God. Thank you, Rich Miller. Wow, that rich, deep voice. That's soothing like its own meditation. I don't know about the rest of you. I think it's pretty sexy. But thank you, Rich, for your contributions again this morning. We love having you here on Sunday. And Drake, thank you so much for your message. Wow, some beautiful, wonderful metaphors. After a storm, all puddles reflect the sun. That is really cool. Um, but uh, I took a lot of notes as far as being grounded. I love the concept of everything's a cosmic mirror. Um, you reminded us that the shadow does come with us. Um, and uh, the analogy of sitting on the couch when it catches on fire is rather uh, really makes a point. I, I think the best, I, I like the best of you sharing uh, your code with us, and especially I like the concept of positive indifference. It reminds us that uh, all is well, the universe has our back. So thank you so much for that very powerful message. Glad to have you back. Hopefully it won't be another four years before you'll come join us. 
All right, so we're going to shift gears here. In this time of COVID and Zoom, we still have considerable expenses to maintain our beautiful center in anticipation of our eventual return. All of us who are fond of and connected to Unity of the Valley are immensely grateful for your monetary contributions to keep our spiritual community going and thriving as well as your participation in our services. We affirm the natural expansion of our own prosperity as well as that of Unity of the Valley as we give of our time, talents, and treasure with a high vibration of gratitude and an open heart. Let's read the love offering affirmation together, and then you'll have time during a musical interlude to consider your love offering. You may make your contribution after the service either by, mail, by mailing a check to the center or via the donate button on our website. So we thank you in advance for your contributions. Please join me in this love offering affirmation together. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I give, all that I receive, and all that I am. My gift goes forth on the wings of love And it lands where it can heal and bless It returns to me Multiplied a thousandfold as the universe Says yes, yes, as the universe says yes my gift goes forth on the wings of love and it lands where it can heal and bless it returns to me multiplied a thousandfold as the universe says yes yes as the universe says yes. Thank you, Rich. Now I invite everyone to join me in blessing all contributions and good of any kind so generously given to support Unity of the Valley this week. Together, we affirm that God is our source and we are the channels. We bless our gifts given in love that serve our spiritual family and flow out into our community and beyond. We are prosperous and blessed with abundant good. Thank you, Mother, Father, God. All right, I'm told that Jennifer Stevens has a breaking announcement, so I'm going to let her go first. Okay, uh, I'm just asking anybody that's willing to volunteer to help maintain the gardens, please contact me. Um, I just need some volunteers to, to, to regularly come by and do a little bit of weeding and move the sprinklers. Um, it would take maybe 30 minutes if, if I get enough people, uh, you could do it one, we could get one, per, one person every day or one person to do once to, every two weeks. If you're willing, if you live near this, relatively near the center and you're willing to just come and do a little bit of yard maintenance, just give me a call. Thank you. If you have not been by the center lately, the gardens are beautiful. So there are at least uh, maybe a half a dozen people that have contributed some time to the garden and they are just beautiful. So if you can come and help water, we appreciate it. All right, so moving on to the uh, scheduled announcements. Our weekly Tuesday morning guided meditation is available live at 11 a.m. or recorded on our Unity of the Valley Facebook page. This coincides with the same meditation given at Unity Village and other, in other Unity Centers, which magnifies the effect on the world of our peace and raised vibrations, just like Drake was telling us about. Our second announcement. Remember that spiritual teacher and intuitive medium Jeff Jowett will give the message on Sunday, July 26th, and in the afternoon from 1 to 3.30, he'll facilitate a Zoom workshop titled Becoming Friends with Your Higher Self. 
cost is $40. Please see your buzz or the website for more details and to register. Your higher self will thank you, and your lower self will appreciate the added support. Next message, Catherine Belial is offering a 50% off Zoom special on her Max Meditation, next scheduled for Monday evening, July 27th at 7 p.m. The cost will be reduced to $10 while we're still on Zoom, and it will return to its regular price of $20 when we resume live classes at the center. The Max Meditation includes relaxation, passive meditation, active meditation, and guided visualization. Register using the link in the buzz and or on our website. All proceeds will be donated to the center, 100%. So thank you again, Catherine Belial. Next message. Uh, the board had a meeting last Tuesday, and we've decided that the center will remain closed through Labor Day weekend to all Unity Services classes and meetings and to all public event rental activities. We will continue to live stream our Sunday service via Zoom and our Facebook page and offer a video recording of that service through our website, YouTube, and Facebook. The board will revisit this decision at a September 8th trustees meeting. We will continue to hold the health and well-being of our community members as one of our highest priorities during these challenging times. And thanks to all of you who stayed last Sunday after the service and had a discussion, gave us some feedback that was very helpful. So we got a lot of good impact, uh, input as well. Next message. For the 10th consecutive month, Unity of the Valley has produced more income than expense in its monthly operating budget. We continue to grow stronger financially as an organization with each passing month. And this is with intention. Every surplus dollar that we receive or save each month will be applied to our new roof campaign with a goal of $35,000 by December 31st, 2020. So again, when you see that we have a little bit more revenue than expense, it's not going into a slush fund. It doesn't mean that we don't need your help. It's by intent. We need to have that excess surplus dollar to 35000 by December 31. We could not and would not be in such an abundant financial position without the generous tithes and love offerings we receive from you, our members and friends. Thank you, thank you, thank you for these continued blessings. And the next message, I am so excited. We're excited to announce the creation of our Friday Night Light series. Beginning in September, Unity of the Valley will produce a positive, uplifting series of New Thought concerts, U-Talks. I invented that. It's, you know, like a TED Talk. It's going to be a U-Talk. And we're going to bring back movie nights. Every Friday night, beginning at 7 o'clock, we have a blockbuster lineup already in place. I'm just busting. I want to share it with you, but... I'm going to swear all the board members to secrecy right now until we can uh, put it together in an announcement. But watch this space and just go ahead and block off your calendar every Friday night at 7 o'clock. Nowhere but Unity of the Valley. Stay tuned. All right, so thanks for your attention. Let's move on now to our prayer for protection. And I invite you to join me. Together, the light of God surrounds me. I am that light. The love of God enfolds me. I am that love. The power of God protects me. I am that power. The presence of God watches over me. I am that presence. Wherever I am, God is. Wherever God is, I am. And all is well. Thank you for joining us today. Please be well. Stay connected with Unity of the Valley. If you'd like to be part of the Zoom social after the service, just stay logged in, and Drake says he'll stay for some questions. Say hi to everybody. Uh, say hi to your friends and guests. We're going to conclude the service right now with Rich Miller one more time and our closing song, Thank You for This Day. Namaste. Thank you, John. All right, so most of you know how this goes, right? It's thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. Repeat. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. This beautiful, this beautiful, this beautiful day. This beautiful, this beautiful, this beautiful day. Thank you for my health, Spirit. Thank you for my health. Thank you for my health, Spirit. Thank you for my health. 
My radiant, my radiant, my radiant health. My radiant, my radiant, my radiant health. Friends, thank you for my friends, spirit. Thank you for my friends. Thank you for my friends, spirit. Thank you for my friends. These wonderful, these wonderful, these wonderful friends. These wonderful, these wonderful, these wonderful friends. Life, thank you for my life, spirit. Thank you for my life. Thank you for my life, spirit. Thank you for my life. My spiritual, my spiritual, my spiritual life. My spiritual, my spiritual, my spiritual life. One more. Thank you for your love, spirit. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love, spirit. Thank you for your love. Your glorious, your glorious, your glorious love. Your glorious, your glorious, your glorious love. Yeah, have a blessed day.